Well, praise the Lord again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. I'm your host, Joe Bahoda. And I got a good one for you today. For all my new subscribers and people who've been listening to me in the past week or so, because I gained a lot of subscribers in the past week. So praise God again. Thank you for subscribing and thank you and welcome to the channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of, you know, kind of, you know, um, some serious things. But every now and again, I do something light. Like today, I, do, I got a movie review. Um, now, granted, the, the movie is not lighthearted. Uh, this is uh, the movie Bonhoeffer. You know, the German uh, pastor theologian, you know, in Germany during World War II. Okay, so this movie is not for the faint of heart or lighthearted. Uh, because of the subject matter, this is a very, very serious you know, hard movie. Um, but boy, is it good. Boy, is it good. Um, I'm entitling this, you know, the movie you didn't know you needed, but you do. Um, I give this movie an A. I'm just telling you right straight up from the, the front. Um, I give this movie an A. Okay. So again, I'm doing a movie review and, uh, Bonhoeffer, me and my wife, we went to see this movie this past weekend. And, uh, again, I give this movie an A. This movie is very, very, very good. It's uh, the movie you didn't know you needed, but you do. Um, now, I'll warn you, uh, because of the seriousness of the movie and what happened, you know, during World War II and Nazism and all that, there's many scenes in this movie. If you are very empathic, very mercy-driven, very compassionate-driven like my wife is, uh, there's about three or four different scenes in this movie where my, my wife was just bawling like a baby um, because it's because of what happened, okay? So... I'm warning you, you're, it is gonna, it's a tearjerker of a movie. It really, really is. Um, but because of that, it's one of the, in a good way, in a good way, it's one of the movies when you get done seeing it, it's going to stay with you for a while. Um, I got done watching it about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and four hours later, I was still trying to process what I just saw. Um, it's, it's one of them. It's one of them. It's one of the movies as a believer um, as a follower, disciple, devoted follower of Christ, um, it's going to stay with you in a good way. It's going to stay with you in a good way. Um, and you're going to have to process some stuff because there's a lot in there in a good way. There's a lot in there. Um, let me, I'm not going to tell you everything that happens because um, I don't want to spoil it. But I, I, there's a couple scenes that just, I, it's so tug on my heart. Um there's one scene in the movie where, because again, he's a German theologian. He comes to America in the, in New York City to do his studies, to do his theological, you know, training and seminary and all that. And he befriends, or uh, a black guy befriends him. But anyway, his best friend, his best friend becomes a black guy, and he's like, "Hey, hey, you know, they call hey, they call him D or Dietrich is his first name." So they said, "Hey." You know, hey, D, come to New York City. I'm, and he takes him to a uh, uh, New York City jazz club where pretty much there's only black people in there. But Diedrich knows how to play the piano. Now, granted, it's more like, I'll, I'll call it like German classical, right? So when he came to America, he didn't know, you know, blues or, you know, like jazz or anything like that. Um, he just knew how to play like German classical type of stuff. And obviously, maybe the German hymns that they would have had in the German church or whatever. But he, he takes them to this nightclub, and the band invites Diedrich on stage. And he starts playing, like, a German tune, I guess, or whatever. I, again, I don't know what the song was, so don't, don't quote me on that. But he starts playing that. But then the band in the back picks it up, and they turn it into a jazz tune. Like a, a very dancey, you know, get up and raw, raw jazz tune. <laughs> So to make a long story short, man, Diedrich like befriends like all these people and they befriend him. And he's like, he's like one of the crew. And, uh, and then, then he goes to church, um, with his friend and he basically goes to like, a, you know, it's pre pretty much an all black church. And now again, I know, I know there's no such thing as a white church, black church. There's only one church and I get all that, but it's predominantly black and it's kind of has a Pentecostal charismatic feel to it. And it's kind of like, do you ever see the movie, movie Forrest Gump? When Forrest Gump is the only white guy in the whole choir, and the whole choir is black except him, he's the only white guy in the all-black choir. That's how Diedrich Bonhoeffer is in this movie. He's the only white guy in the whole entire church. And he's clapping and swaying and shouting and having a good time, praising God, and he's the only white guy in there. 
Um, and then after church, oh my gosh, after church, the pastor and all the other friends and stuff, they, I guess they go to his house or they go to a house and they have a fellowship meal. This is what they call biblical communion. In, in the Bible, communion, guys, was, and I said this many, many times in my show, that communion in the Bible was not just a little thing, a, a grape juice and a, the little wafer on top for convenience. No. In the Bible, communion was actually what it was, a communal meal. It was a supper. It was a dinner. It was a, it was a, it was a fellowship meal that they had. Well, that's what they, that's what they did. All, all these black people came in together with Dietrich and um, they befriend him. He befriends them. They love him, you know, and, and he loves them. And, and they're just throwing down in this communal meal. They're having communion with Dietrich and Dietrich having communion with them. And they befriend him. He befriends them. And through that experience, yes, not only did he learn jazz, but through that experience, he, his theology changed in a good way. He realized that the German church that he came from was essentially kind of dead in its application. Yeah, they had all the doctrine, they had they had all the theology, but i.e. orthodoxy, but they didn't have orthopraxy, i.e. the way that you live it out and the way that you practice it. It's kind of like the book of James, faith without works is dead. And he realized, yeah, they had all the teachings and they had all the theology, but they weren't they didn't have fellowship. They didn't love people. They weren't getting out into community. They weren't affecting nobody. They weren't loving on the community. They didn't have that, that fellowship, that kononia that the Bible talks about. You know, the, all those one another's in the church, loving one another and, and praying for one another and admonishing one another and comforting one another and pray for one another and all those one another's in the Bible. Apparently, the German church in, at that time wasn't doing it. So they had all the theology and they, they could teach you how to do all that, but they, they weren't living it. And they didn't have a lively expression of what it means to be a believer. Well, Diedrich Bonhoeffer got that in America, hanging out with the people, if you will, in the black church. And I'm telling you, this part of the movie really resonated with me. For those, for those of you who are new to my channel and you don't know my backstory, yeah, I'm a white guy. But I was raised in what you call the black church. Um... I got saved in the military. The guy who led me to the Lord was a black guy. Um, and then eventually, when I was in Alaska, I went to a, uh, a Baptist church that was all black people in it. So for a long time, I was like the only white guy in that church. I eventually became a deacon in that church. And eventually, I was called to minister and uh, you know became a preacher and stuff later. But I've been saved now for like 28 years in the first like 15 years of my life was that experience. The black church, if you will, experience. I was the only white guy in the all black choir, just like Forrest Gump was. I was that guy. For years and years and years and years, um, I was that guy and I was Brother Joe, but you know, <laughs> I was hanging out with, with them. And, and, and so I was raised, as far as music, I was raised on like Kurt Franklin and um, you know, John P. Key and you know, I mean, the list goes on and on. C.C. Wyans, B.B. Wyans, I mean, um, Kirk Carr, uh, Fred Hammond. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, I mean, that's how I grew up. That, that's what I grew up on. That's many different preachers listening to. I mean, that, this is, that was my world for the first 15 years of my saved, saved life. Uh, and it really just tongue in my heart in a good way because it made me realize how much I related to Bonhoeffer's story, at least that part of it, and how much I miss it. Um, now, I don't miss all of it, but, and how much I miss it and how much I missed it. Um, it's been a long time since I had that. Um, it really has been a long time since I had that. And I was like, wow, that's, that's what, that's what it was. <laughs> that's what it was. Um, it was just such a joyous time in my life. It was such a joyous time in my life. And when I saw that, that part of uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer's life, I could tell it was like a very good, awesome time in his life too. And I could totally relate to that. Um, then he gets back to Germany and this is, and then he teach, and then he basically teaches his family jazz. <laughs> and they're like, what is this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he takes jazz back to his family. And when he goes back to Germany, that's when Hitler's on the rise of power. And there's a scene where basically, you know, if you know the history, Hitler is basically promising the German people that we're going to make Germany a superpower and we're going to bring pride back to Germany again. 
And unfortunately, some people in the German church bought into that lie and bought into the ideology and bought into that identity to where their identity wasn't in Christ anymore. Their identity was in German nationalism and German pride, which was really, and they show this beautifully in the movie, that was really just a smokescreen for power and privilege. And the reason some of the clergy bought into that because they wanted the power and the privilege because they're like, we want the power and the privilege for the church. So they're doing all of this in the name of Christ, but it really wasn't in Christ at all. It was really in the name of Hitler. And one of the, one of the bishops even said, Hitler is our Messiah. And it was all done, being done in the name of German nationalism. And um, <clears throat> it's just really, really scary because it's really just about power and privilege. Okay, well, to make a long story short, Bonhoeffer completely rebuked all that. Completely rebuked all that. He's like, we only got one king, and his name is Jesus. We only got one Messiah, and his name is Jesus. And it's about Christ and his kingdom and not this Nazism stuff. So he preached against it. He got up on church at one Sunday, and he... And the scripture that he used was Jesus' words, Oh, you scribes, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. That was the verse he used to come against all that. Basically, your whitewashed tombs, you know, talking how Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. Well, he basically replaced Pharisees and said, basically, the German church, you guys are the Pharisees, you German church people who are supporting this madness. So make a long story short, Bonhoeffer became on the hit list really, really quickly and fast. And there's a lot of going back and forth in his life, but then eventually at the end of the day, you know, the Germans catch him, okay? But, and I'll leave it at that. But anyway, that scene really tugged on me because there's a lot of similarities. Now, it's not, it's not 100% parallel translation. And I'm not saying, you know, we're Nazis or anything like that. God knows we're not. We're not there, but... If you take out German nationalism, if you take out the word German and throw in the word American, um, there's a lot of similarities. If you look at the, the movement, unfortunately, in my opinion, that's on the rise, Christian nationalism, it's really American pride and American nationalism. So therefore, there's really nothing Christian about it at all. There's nothing Christian about it. It's just make America the superpower of the earth. And essentially, the, the Christian nationalists want that. So essentially, Christians can run America. And basically through that, Debo, the people who aren't Christian, and i.e., or Debo, the rest of the world. Because people who are Christian nationalists, a lot of people believe that, you know, America was ordained by God to be the superpower of the world, to basically police the world. The Debo, the world, it, this theology is called dominionism, okay? We, the church, the body of Christ is going to have dominion. Well, historically, that's never gone well. When the church has had, had absolute power and control historically, it's never gone well, okay? Well, there's a scene in the movie when one of the German church bishops bought into this, and he said, God has ordained Germany to basically be the next superpower, Take out the word Germany and, and supply it and substitute it with America. And that's what the, a lot of these Christian nationalists believe, that America is God-ordained by God to be the next superpower of the earth. Again, take out Germany and substitute America, and you get kind of the same theology, only with an American flavor. Um, that resonated with me, and that scared me, and I was like, you know what, yeah, we seriously need to look at this. Hence, that's why I'm saying, this is the movie you needed, but you didn't know you did. Um, and I say that to say this. This movie, again, is an A. I give it a total A. This movie is really, really, really good. Um, and so, one, it'll encourage you because it'll give you that fellowship and that lightedness and what it means to really be bonded with your brother and, and sister in Christ. It's just so, the beginning of, this, of, of it is so wonderful. But also too, it's a warning and wake up call for us Christians who have maybe gotten complacent, who may have not realized our identity 
and our hope is found in Christ and nothing less. Like the old hymn says, you know, my hope is found um, in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. My hope is found in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And our identity is found in Christ and nothing else. Because when your identity is found in nothing else or something else, then by default, you'll start worshiping your new God. And that's what happened in Germany. And basically Hitler became their Messiah as opposed to Christ. Um, when your hope is found in Christ and nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness, when you lose that, then by default, your hope will be found in something else. And you'll start worshiping that. And that'll become your new God. So this is a warning and wake-up call for us as believers. Also, too, it's a warning and wake-up call. The church is supposed to be about loving and ministering and helping people. So we should be on the good side of helping the oppressed and marginalized, not leading to their demise. The church is supposed to be on the right side of that, not the wrong side of that. Um... This is a stream wake-up call for those of us who may have forgotten that or haven't thought about it in a while. This movie's a wake-up call, big time. A warning and wake-up call. It's uh, it's a kick in the pants for those of us who need it, which is a good thing. Very, very, very good thing. So I highly recommend this movie. This movie, um, it is a tearjerker. So there's about three or four scenes that will pull on your heart and you may be bawling your eyes out. Um, but it, it's worth it, man. Uh, this movie will stay with you in a good way. Um, it's a very good movie. I give this movie an A. I give this movie an A. Go see Bonhoeffer. Now, I will say this. I read some stuff online where they said some of it, you know, they took a lot of, you know, movie liberties and a lot of it was like fantasy. It wasn't all real. Um, they took a lot of fantasies in it and all that. That may be true. Um, I am not a Bonhoeffer historian. So... That critique may be fair. It, that, that, that could be very, very fair. Um, they might have taken a lot of liberties that weren't necessarily true. And again, that could be fair. Um, I'm not a Bonhoeffer historian. So I'll leave that at that. I'm not the guy to ask about the history of his life. Okay. But so that critique may be true. Um, but just the cinematic quality and the story that was told was well worth your time. Well, well worth your time. And um, this is this is a good movie. This is a really, really good movie. And I highly recommend it. I give it an A. Okay? So, again, go see Bonhoeffer. The movie you didn't know you needed, but you do. All right? So, until next time, as always, you know, hit the like button. Hit the share, share the button. Share this as many people as possible. If you haven't subscribed, do so. Can encourage others to subscribe. And until next time, know that God loves you and I do too. God bless everybody.